Gravitational effect of those planets. 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 Gravitational effect of those but over a long period of time, your bones and muscles would start to weaken from lack of resistance. So what do astronauts do to stay healthy and strong during the long visits to the International Space Station? We'll find out in a minute, but first, here's what's happening at NASA now. After almost six months aboard the International Space Station, Expedition 29 returns to Earth on the Soyuz TMA-21 spacecraft. Russian recovery teams were on hand to help the crew exit the Soyuz vehicle and adjust to gravity after their long stay in space. Now, let's take a look at the past. June 1965, the Gemini 4 crew performed the first in-flight exercise. The device consisted of two rubber bungee cords attached to a nylon handle at one end and to a nylon foot strap at the other. During the four-day mission, each astronaut used the device several times a day for 15 to 30 minutes. Physical fitness is just as important in space as it is on Earth, but exercising in space can be difficult. What good are weights if weights don't have any weight? NASA engineers have come up with a few countermeasures to help keep the astronauts healthy. Biomedical engineer Aaron Weaver will help explain. Hi, I'm Aaron Weaver, and this is the Exercise Countermeasures Lab. At the Exercise Countermeasures Laboratory, we have a treadmill that's not mounted like your treadmill at home or in the gym. We put our treadmill vertically and have a runner running on his back. The purpose of this is to try to mimic the treadmill that we have on the space station. Let's take a look at how we got into this position. So the first thing we do is put these cuffs, and the cuffs will go on both the arms and the legs. And what these do is allow us to attach bungee cords to those cuffs because gravity's still here, even though we're trying to mimic what's going on in the space station. But now gravity is gonna wanna pull your arms and your legs behind you. So now that most of the cuffs are on the subject, we put the harness on them, and so he's now going to climb up onto the table. Then we're going to hook him up to a bunch of different bungee cords and cables that are on the ceiling, because we're trying to mimic weightlessness in this point, so we want him to be as natural as possible. Now what we're going to do is actually lift him up off of the gurney or the bed that he's on, and this is actually now going to put him suspended in the air, and now he's ready to start running. Everyone should be getting as much exercise as possible, but a reasonable amount that, that is suggested is an hour a day. The astronauts are allotted two and a half hours a day, which sounds like a lot of time, but when you take out the fact that that time includes getting dressed, uh, setting the equipment up, cleaning up, showering, so there are a lot of extra time for that. On Earth, we can do things like play sports, and other things that are active for exercise that they can't do on the space station. It's a little difficult to have a football game on the space station. So we have them doing things like treadmill exercise, which is basically so they can run. We have stationary bicycles. We have resistive exercises, which mimic lifting weights. One of the things that we're currently working on here at NASA Glenn is a redesign of the harness that the astronauts use to exercise on the treadmill on the space station. In microgravity, they need, you need to be held down to the treadmill because as you can imagine, as soon as you took your first step, you'd fly up and, and hit the ceiling. So to do that, they currently wear a harness similar to this, which we've been using for a while and it's fine, but it's not necessarily that comfortable. And what we're doing is redesigning the harness to be more like you'd see in a backpack. The primary objective of the exercises that we have them do is not just, I mean, it's to keep them in general shape, but it is to try to keep them from losing bone and muscle and other types of properties in, in their body. A typical average for, for a longer term mission, an astronaut might lose one to two percent of their bone per month, which is a lot if you're in space for a couple months. To compare that to what happens here on Earth, women as they age typically can have osteoporosis and so those people on Earth might lose 0.1%, which is 10 times less bone than you're losing in space. 
So an astronaut does regain their muscle, muscle and bone mass once they return to Earth. Basically over the course of a year or two, they're in a program that helps them gain that back. We are working on things that would be more suitable to go to Mars. One of the challenges we have when you go longer term in travel is exercise becomes more important because I said you lose one to 2% of your bone per month. So on the space station, we're up there for six months. So that means you might lose 6% to 10% of your bone. If you're gone for three years, that goes up to say 30% of your bone. So you're losing a lot. One of the challenges we have is how to develop equipment and instruments that are smaller so that we don't take up all the room in the capsule trying to do exercise and medical stuff. When obviously if we're gonna to go to Mars, we'd like to do a lot more science type missions when we get there. Did you know that the vertical treadmill can simulate three different gravity environments? The microgravity conditions on the ISS, the one-sixth gravity of the moon, and the three-eighths gravity found on Mars. Now you know. There are many negative effects to living in space, and the only way scientists learn how to counteract these challenges is through testing and research. You and your students can explore these challenges through five different activities in the lesson plan titled Space Adaptations, The Body. Look for them on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to join us on Facebook and let us know your thoughts. Until next time, we'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.